Hello again everyone, and welcome back. In a previous video, I showed you how you can create your very own Plex server on Linode. And in this video, we're going to take that a little bit further because what I'm going to do is show you how to incorporate block storage on your Plex server, which is going to give you a lot more options when it comes to storage. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Here I have the Plex server that I've created in a previous video. Definitely check out that video if you haven't already done so or if you don't have your own Plex server yet. But this server in particular is a fresh Plex install. There's no media on here just yet. But what I'm going to show you how to do, like I mentioned in the intro, is how to attach block storage and use that for your media. So let's begin. Now first of all, I'm going to check the current storage that I have on the server. And I don't have any additional volumes here. I just have the root file system. There's some system volumes here that I'm going to ignore. But I have this one right here. And I have a fair amount of space here. As you can see, I have 72 gigabytes free. But videos are quite large. And 72 gigs, well, that could actually be used up pretty quickly. So let's go ahead and rectify that. I'm going to clear the screen. And then I'll go back to the Linode dashboard. And here I have the Plex server that I've been working with. But what I'm going to do is go back here. And we see that we have the Plex server Linode right here. So what I want to do is add some storage to the server. So to add block storage, we can go to volumes and then I'll create a volume. We can click right here to do so. We're going to give it a label. I'm going to call mine Plex Media. And what I'm going to do is set mine to, let's say 250 gigabytes. And it's going to show you the estimated monthly cost right underneath that. So that'll give you a good idea as far as what it's going to cost. So what I recommend you do is just find a comfortable size. It doesn't have to be the ultimate size. We can always enlarge the volume in the future if we ever need to do so. So we shouldn't be too concerned with the initial size. So I think 250 gigabytes is probably fine. For the region, what we want to do is select the same region that the Linode instance for Plex actually runs in. So click on Toronto. That's where I created my Plex server. And then we can scroll down and choose the Linode instance to attach it to, which of course is going to be my Plex server. You can add a tag or two if you'd like. I'm going to leave that blank for now and create the volume. So it looks like it's created. So we have the commands right here that we need to use in order to set up the storage volume. So what I'm going to do is just copy each of these lines. So just follow along with me. So I'll first copy this command right here. And then in the terminal right here, I'm already connected to the instance. So what I'll do is type lsblk to list the block storage devices on the Linode instance. And as you can see, we do indeed have a 250 gigabyte disk that's ready to go. Here we have the root file system and here we have swap. But this one right here, that's our new disk. So now what I'll do is type sudo and then I'll paste in the command that I grabbed from the dashboard, the first one. And what this is going to do is make a file system, specifically an extended for file system. And Linode automatically knows where the disk is located and how to reach it. So by pasting the command right here, well, that's all we need to do. We'll just press enter. And this is formatting the volume that's required before we can actually start using it. And now it's done. So here is telling us to make a directory. So what I'm going to do is copy this right here. We do need a directory to mount it to. I'll paste it in. Of course, I'm going to need sudo. So I'll put that in the front of the command. And we're making a directory. In the slash mnt directory, pronounced mount, we have the Plex Media folder, or we will when I press enter. So now we have that. And this command right here can be used to mount the volume. So I copied that command. Let's go ahead and paste it in. Of course, I'll put sudo in there first. And what this is going to do is mount the volume. So I'll press enter. And let's check our storage devices. So df-h. So right here, as you can see, we have the Plex Media folder. And it's mounted. And it's ready to go. Now, in the previous video, what we did is we created a folder specifically for storage, actually. So if I list the storage of the root file system here, we have the Plex Media directory, so this is the directory that we created in the previous video for storing media. 
but this directory is not attached to that storage device that we've added at all. That storage device is actually, like you saw earlier, mounted in slash MNT, which this is not. Now, on my end, I haven't added any media to this server at all whatsoever, so this directory is completely empty. Now, on your end, you might have content on your server already, so how you go about the next step depends on if you have an empty Plex server and you're starting from scratch, or you have an existing one and you want to add additional storage. What I'm going to do first is run sudo systemctl and then stop. I want to stop the Plex Media Server service. And I'll clear the screen and we'll continue. So if I go into the existing media folder, this might be different for you if you put your media folder somewhere else in the file system. In the previous video, what we did is we created a Plex Media folder. And underneath that, we created a folder for movies and for television. Now, if I actually check the storage, we have this one right here, this new one mounted at slash MNT slash Plex Media. So what I'm going to do is use sudo and I'm going to move the movies directory to the new directory that we created the mount point for the storage. And that's going to be under slash MNT slash Plex Media. And this is just an empty directory in my case. On your end, you might have a bunch of media in there. So how long this takes actually depends on how big or how much data you're actually using. For me, it's going to be instantaneous, but for you, maybe it might not be. You might want to consider using something like Tmux. That's beyond the scope of this video. It just keeps your session alive in the background if you ever drop your connection. I'll leave that up to you. But essentially what we're doing is we're moving our content from the original place to the new storage volume. So I'll press enter. Preferably, I'll type the right password. And it's done. Inside this directory, I only have the television folder left, so I want to move that one as well. I'll move it right in there, and that's done. So now our storage volume actually has these directories right here. We can ignore this first one, the lost and found directory, but we've moved the movies directory over to it, and then we moved the television directory over to it. But the problem here is that if we start up Plex, it's not going to find its media folders because we moved everything out. So there's really nothing for it to do. Now that we moved those folders over, this current directory that I'm inside right now is actually going to be empty. And that makes sense. We moved all of our media over to the dedicated volume for this purpose. But Plex doesn't really understand yet that its media directories have changed. So what we might want to consider doing is creating a sim link. You don't have to do it this way. You could actually delete the libraries in Plex and then re-add them. But what I'm going to do instead is actually create the sim link. So I'll go back to the root file system. Now before you run this next command, you do want to make sure that you didn't forget anything, that you did move everything over, because we're going to be removing this directory. We don't need it anymore. So what I'll do is remove the Plex Media directory. And as you can see, it's now gone. But the thing is, Plex does expect to find that directory and it's not here. So we don't really want to start Plex just yet. We want to try to make this seamless if we can. So what I'm going to do is create a symbolic link. So I'll type sudo and then ln dash s. And what I want to do is create the link to slash mnt slash Plex media. And then I could type the name of the local link that I want to create. But if the name is the same as the target, then there's really nothing that I need to do. I'll press enter. And as you can see, we have the Plex Media directory right here. Well, actually, it's a symbolic link. And it's actually pointing to this directory right here. So let's go ahead and test that out. We should be able to run ls-l. And we should be able to do that against slash Plex Media. At the root of the file system, even though it's a link, the output should look exactly the same. And as you can see, it does. We have movies and television right there. So what I'm going to do next is start up Plex. And then we'll check the status of it. And as you can see, it's running. So at this point, going forward, when we add media to Plex, we're actually adding it to a secondary volume, a block storage volume. And that's great because we don't risk actually filling up the root file system of the server itself. It's always good to segregate the data if you can, so that's why we did it that way. And in the article that accompanies this video, there's also an example of copying media over to the server via SCP. And once you do that, you can move the media files into the appropriate directories, 
And from that point forward, Plex should be able to find them. Now, I don't have any content in my case that I can add to this particular Plex server. But again, just check the article if you need a walkthrough of the process of using SCP to copy data over to the Plex server. It's fairly straightforward, so I'll leave that up to you. But now we have successfully pointed Plex to a dedicated storage volume, a dedicated block storage volume. So we can go ahead and just copy media over to the volume and we should be good to go. Another thing that we really should do is set up the Plex server to automatically mount the volume that we've just created. Otherwise, when it starts up, it won't be mounted. We need to add a special line to the Etsy FS tab file, and that'll handle the automatic mounting of that storage volume. So let's take care of it. Back here on the dashboard, we actually have the line of configuration that we need to grab. So I'll copy that. And then what we're going to do is run sudo and then nano. We want to edit a file. And a file that we want to edit is slash etsy slash fs tab. So I'll press enter. And then what we want to do is paste the line that we grabbed here at the very end of this file. And there it is. A full discussion about the fs tab file is beyond the scope of this video, but basically what's going on here is when the system boots, it's going to consult this file and it's going to attempt to mount everything that's listed here line by line. And right here, we are calling out the block storage volume that we've created, and we're also telling it where to mount it. There's other options as well, but that's the basic idea. We're just letting the system know that we always want this mounted. Otherwise, the Plex server would start without it mounted, which wouldn't work because it wouldn't be able to access the media. So I'll save the file and then exit out. And that should be all there is to it. Block storage is awesome. There's all kinds of different use cases you could use block storage for, and your imagination is your only limit. Today we extended our Plex server, but you could also extend a Nextcloud server, a backup server, or whatever you'd like. It's a very flexible service, and you can apply it to whatever your use case happens to be. Now, if you haven't already subscribed to Linode's channel, make sure you do that. We have some awesome content coming very soon, and I'll see you again. Thanks for watching.